What's going on guys, John Griffith here with Max Fortitude Fitness and today we're gonna to be talking about fitness in the firefighting career field. So this is week one of a four week series that is gonna highlight fitness in the different first responder career fields that there are. So before we jump into all of this, a little background on myself. I've been a firefighter for seven years. I've worked both as an active duty firefighter and as a civilian firefighter working on a military base. So before we get into just throwing out exercises that someone needs to do, regardless of whatever their job is and what their, their lifestyle looks like, we go through these series of steps in order to determine what's the best type of exercise for them. So we always, we're gonna start with a movement slash job analysis. From there, we're gonna move on to looking at the different energy systems and how that is incorporated into what the job actually entails. We'll go on to injury analysis, and then finally, once we get all these three steps completed, then we can finally start to look at recommendations as far as what's best for that individual. So again, everything today is gonna to pertain to firefighting and that career field. So with that, let's begin. So looking at step number one, the movement slash job analysis. And really, when we take a look at this, all I'm thinking about is what are the common movement patterns that the individual has in, the, in their particular career field. So if we look at something like firefighting, and this is pretty diverse as far as what they're called to do on the job, uh, the different things that they have are lifting. So whether that's a tool or a patient, you have carrying and gripping, which is also another big thing. Um, and this could be just carrying tools or again, also carrying a victim once they have that victim lifted up. Next, we have dragging. So when you look at things like search and rescue, then they're gonna be with that victim, probably on the ground, knuckle dragging them out of a building. We have climbing, whether it's with stairs or a ladder. And then finally, we have striking. So what the striking is, is it's often using a tool, whether it's a sledgehammer or an ax, and it's used for things like ventilation and forcible entry. So we know what the firefighters are doing. These are the common movement patterns that we have. The next thing that we need to do is start looking at what energy systems are involved in what they're doing. And we're gonna go a little bit more in depth with this here in another video. But for, uh, for today, just know that there's three different energy systems that you have. And you're never gonna work solely in one of these energy systems. You're always kind of using a ratio of all three, it just depends on what activity you're doing, which one is gonna be the predominant energy source. So the three different energy systems we have are adenosine, triphosphate, creatine phosphate, and that's gonna be our, say something like you're doing a, a movement like a power snatch or something, or you're picking something off the ground for a single time. The majority of that energy is gonna be derived from that ATP, CP energy system. So it has a real short reserve, so it's used up quickly, usually within the first one to six seconds of activity. From there, we sustain the energy, energy by moving into the glycolytic system. So this is from about 30 seconds all the way up to approximately about two minutes. You have a little bit higher reserve of how much you can use here, but again, this one is gonna start to diminish as well over time. And then finally, the last energy system we have is called the oxidative system. And you think of something like running three miles, something like that, where it's long, it's sustained. The majority or the, the major energy system that's gonna be involved in that is gonna be your oxidative one. And again, don't worry about too much of that right now. Just know that there's three different energy systems. And once we understand that, we can begin to look at what energy systems are again involved in the common movements in firefighting. So we take a look at something like lifting, again, going back to possibly lifting a patient off the ground, that's gonna be a short burst of energy, probably less than about six seconds. So we're gonna classify that as our ATP system. Carry and gripping, it can range from doing it for very short term to possibly, I would say up to about two minutes dependent. You're not really gonna go too much further than that. So I would classify that as either ATP or into our glycolytic pathway. Next we have dragging. So going back to our search and rescue example, you're probably gonna be anywhere from about 30 seconds 
up to possibly multiple minutes in this here. So a little bit more extended with this, we're looking at glycolytic. Again, we can go a little bit further than that depending on the actual scenario. I would even classify that possibly as oxidative. Next, climbing, stairs and ladders. Similar to our dragging aspect, you're probably gonna be doing it for about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more. So I would classify that under the same one as either glycolytic or oxidative. And then finally, way up striking. We go back to thinking about those quick bursts of energy. I would classify this as ATP and possibly glycolytic. So when we look at the, the spiel of things here, you see that with firefighting, it's, kindly, it's kind of dispersed pretty evenly throughout the three different pathways that we have. Now I would probably focus the most on our glycolytic and oxidative systems with this. But of course, given that we have those short bursts of energy that you need, whether it's with a victim or striking to get entry into a building, you can't negate that ATP system. So that's going to be important. But again, a lot of what we do is going to be involved in those medium to longer duration activities. So once we have that, we have energy systems, we have our movement slash pattern job analysis. Next thing we're going to go on to is injury prevention. So injuries are pretty prevalent, prevalent in firefighting. It is a dangerous job. Um, so the biggest threat we have with that um, is heart attacks. And whether it's because of a lack of cardiorespiratory health or simply going from zero to 60 in a few seconds, being woken up in the middle of the night, heart attacks for a long time have plagued the fire service. So that's a big thing we need to focus on and especially strengthening and conditioning that cardiorespiratory system. Next one we have is lower back injuries. So whether it's on the job, working with a patient, picking them up, or simply at the firehouse, picking something off the ground. A lot of times we see people get lower back injuries on things, again, that are as minor as picking up a cardboard box off the ground. And it happens a lot more often than a lot of people, a lot, a lot more often than a lot of people like to admit. And our last one here is slips, trips, and falls. So again, this can be on the fire scene, tripping over hose or falling off of a ladder. Or again, we go into the fire station, just simply not paying attention to what's around or having water on the stall floors. It's real easy to get injured in an accident like that. So with all of those looking at the, sorry, there's a fly in here. <laughs> Anyways, looking at the, the career field and all the aspects and movement patterns that go into it, what we can do once we finally have a good understanding and grasp on that is look at the recommendations as far as fitness and what we need to be doing. So my first recommendation with this is deadlifting. Deadlifting is simply picking an object, object off the ground and it's essential just because it's gonna strengthen a lot of what we need on the actual job. So again, whether we're picking something off the ground, whether we're carrying something, that posterior chain, those hamstrings, those glutes, and that lower back are all gonna be necessary for those job functions. I think it's one of the best exercises regardless, but again, that's gonna be my top recommendation as far as exercise wise. Next thing where I recommend is balance training. So balance training, again, we're working, when we take a look at things like going upstairs or working on a ladder, you're not really working on even train a lot of time your body weight is going to be off balance so it might be shifted on one leg and because of that we look at balance training so how can we train that we can do movements like lunges which is going to mimic going upstairs we can do things like farmers carries or farmers walks which is simply two objects in your hand and simply walking with that and that's kind of simulating carrying tools to and from say an auto accident scene and then things like box step up. So again, we're thinking, taking a look at things like stairs and going up ladders, all those three, and there's of course plenty more out there, but those are three recommendations under the umbrella of balance training. And then our last one is cardio. We go back to looking at heart attacks being that biggest threat in the fire service. We really need to focus on that cardiorespiratory part and the health of that. So an easy way to do that, especially if you haven't done any type of cardio for a while, is to work with a one to three work ratio, one part work with three parts rest 
for 20 minutes. And it could be, if you haven't run in a while, I'd recommend walking, maybe mixing up a little bit of jogging, but you do one minute of either that fast paced walking or jogging, and then three minutes of rest where you're just simply walking at a slow pace. So you pick that intensity up for a minute, for one minute, ease it off for the next three minutes, do that a total of five times, and that's gonna give you your 20 minutes of work. And then of course, we can start to, as you build that baseline health, to increase that. So instead of working with a one to three ratio, maybe we work with a one to two ratio, and eventually maybe down to a one to one. And of course, with that, we can also increase the time with that. So instead of 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, but just make sure you're not doing the same at, or doing both at the same time. So if you're increasing or decreasing your work to rest ratio, then keep that time the same. If that, if you increase the time, yeah, if you increase the time, keep that ratio the same. You don't want to do both at the same time because it's just advancing a lot quicker than you need to be and it opens that risk for injury. So that's it for looking at fitness in the fire service. If you know any firefighters that are interested in learning more about health and fitness, have them check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash maxfortitudefitness or on our website maxfortitudefitness.com. Thanks for watching guys. Next week we'll be taking a look at law enforcement and police officers. See you then.